today, another area <coughs> that you need to develop skills at. And that is how to become effective at making notes based on all that research that you're doing. What's the purpose of them? Why do we need to do it? How do we end up doing it? Because what we want to do is for each of you to become really great at making those notes relating to all of that research you do. About all the thinking that you do. Because much of what I find helps is actually while I'm driving to and from work, or as is proverbial, thinking in the shower or the bath. You know, those short times when we have privacy essentially and no one's chatting to us. And we have ideas. And we can think through some of the ideas, make those connections between the idea over there and the idea over there that no one has ever connected before. And we connect them just because we happen to have come up with, come across those two ideas within a short space of time. And suddenly we think our brain kind of does odd things and it produces these interesting connections. <coughs> so notes can be quite useful to capture those because if we don't capture them quickly, they tend to go away. And what I also want you to try and do is to think about doing a bit of practice about how to do this. It could be what you're doing, should be doing now, making notes during a lecture or a seminar or a workshop. So you're listening to someone and you need to find a way of capturing the critical items. There's no point in writing everything down. That's why I video these as well, so that you don't have to write everything down, because you can actually play it again and listen to what I've been saying, because a good slide, like the one behind me, has very few words on it. It's a little tiny framework to help you, as the audience, the listener, to kind of build some hooks in your memory about what's coming along in the next two or three minutes. This is part of planning presentations, and we'll look at developing a presentation uh, next week. <coughs> and one of the most important things is not to fill the slide with lots and lots and lots of words. Because you might just as well, I mean, if I had that full of little tiny words, little tiny letters, I mean that is what, 24 point text. But often you will see people putting 10, 15 point text in a slide and it would be dense, dense text. People who do that do it because they don't have it all properly prepared up here. Do you remember on Friday when I showed you that video from What's Now, uh, What's World of Watson, where Janira Metti was standing there talking? She had a very small autoprompt, not the sort that most speakers have, where the text is in sort of 40, 50 point, and it scrolls slowly up, and they read every single word that's written down there. No, she had got most of it in her head, and she had a single page that hardly moved during that whole hour, hour and a quarter that she was talking. You can see her flick her eye just down on the autoprompt just occasionally to pick up, yeah, I'm there, that's the next point. That is what good slides are all about. That's what good notes are about. A simple framework with a few critical items. And then maybe you highlight the very, very, very most important of those messages that you want to capture. So, making notes during lectures and seminars, and then the second type of note that you make while you're doing your literature research, researching maybe for your assignments, 
or other work that you're doing where you're reading lots of literature and you want to capture the essence of each article. You're not trying to capture the, the essence of every single paragraph or even each section. You're trying to pick up the most important things that strike you with your individual background about that particular topic in the context of all of your past research, your past reading, listening, seeing. What are the connections? Two different ways of doing things. Now what I'd like you to do over the next week as part of that effort you put into working by yourself, independent learning as we call it, through the next week, is to do this little exercise here. Find three good sources somewhere out there, might be on the university's website, in the skills section. You'll find something about how to make notes. You will also find across all the universities in the UK, and worldwide probably, lots of good ideas, presentations, papers, about why we make notes. Why are they useful? What is it that they're doing in terms of helping us to understand what we're reading, structuring what we're reading, and then helping us to remember it so we can use it in the future. And then as you do this work, I know that all of you typically get together in small groups at various times, in your lectures, your workshops, your tutorials, outside having coffee or whatever. Have discussions about what you have learned, about why making notes is useful. Don't just listen to me, because you can't put this lecture as a, a citation or a reference. It's just a lecture. I might be leaving up the country. Go find authoritative sources about why it is valuable to create notes, how they are useful. Discuss it. And then, as, as you go on, not just why are they useful, but how do I do it? Now, each of us is different, and the way that we actually end up making notes is going to be different because it's going to need to feed our own individual preferences and capabilities. So find at least three good sources on how to make notes. Look for different ways of making notes, not just three that all say the same thing. Because if you do that, you've only really learned one thing. What you need to find are three different ways of making notes. Because that way, you will then be able to compare and contrast these three different ways. And then you'll be able to select the way that really, really works for you. Now, it could be you write it down in words, Pen and paper, you may use just bullets and bullet points, or you may have you know, write a little title and then write a few words that describe what you've learned. You might do a mind map. Who knows what works for you individually? Find out what the best way is from these at least three sources. You might want to find more than that if you're really interested in it. And let's hope that many of you are really interested enough to go find more than three. But you'll need to find at least three different sets of guidance so that you can then find and choose the one that really works for you and then practice it. Did anybody bother to do uh, mind mapping? Has anybody tried mind mapping? For all 
all those who just raised your hands, does it actually also work for you? Is it a really good way of working, or do you, you tried it and it didn't work? How many worked? How many decided not to use mind mapping? So why did you try it and find it, decide not to use it? Too spread out and too vague. Someone who does use it and finds it works, why did that did it work for you? Interesting. It helped me to visualize what was there. Now this is interesting because we all have different ways of thinking and working. And some of us like to work in words, it's nice structured bullet points or whatever. Some of us like to see things. We build pictures in our heads. Now, can I ask those two who answered, the first few, when you read a book, let's, do you read um, novels and so on? Do you just see the words or does something else happen in your head? Now, you up there at the top there, when you read a novel or something like that, does something happen in your head? You see a film. So, how many of you see films when you read words and read books? Okay. Now, I would suggest that that means you are pretty good visual processing and you like to see things. So, maybe all of those who put their hand up just then who haven't tried mind maps might try mind map and see how that helps you. Because that's how I see things. I mean, I read a book almost entirely to see a film. <coughs> I create that film in my head. And I, mind maps, I find, actually are very valuable at times. Another reason for mind maps is because you can connect ideas together. The classic mind map is just branches and branches and out to the leaves. But you can also connect one idea on one branch with a loop to another idea. And you know, some of us actually think almost in spider's webs of connections. <laughs> and if you do that, then mind maps may well work quite well. There's one downside with a, with a, sort of a spider's web <laughs> thinking. Is it makes it difficult to work <coughs> out how to plan your writing down that golden arrow in a linear fashion, because you've got so many ideas connecting. Working out how to lay it out in a linear fashion becomes more complicated. So see how you can do that. I'll show you this next item, the Navy and Bagley thing, in a second. <coughs> because what I want to cover today as well is as you practice this making notes using the Navy and Bagley item from this week's session, you're going to have to start making notes about what is that article about, what are the types of transferable skills that the researchers are talking about, and what is it, what is it that the people who are being surveyed, graduates, are saying about the value of skills. So I want you to go through the article and make some notes, whether you do it in, in sort of text form or whether you do it in a visual type of form. I really don't mind, it depends what works for you, but I want you to do this to begin to understand how note taking, how note making works for you in a research context. And there are a couple of questions that you need to be answering as you make your notes. And you might want to try making notes in the two different forms, one in that sort of structured, bullet pointy sort of set bash fashion, and also in a mind map sort of fashion. The nice thing about mind maps is that they kind of help you to spread the major concepts around the central point, and then 
with the major topics, and then the branches spread out to the next level of content, uh, concepts, and then to the fine detail. You can do the same, though, in a structured fashion, a bit like that with indented bullet points going on. Out of this research, out of this practice, you will then discover, hopefully, the best way of making notes for you, what the representation is. There are other forms where people write more words, highlight in yellow or green or different colours of highlighter <laughs> that highlight the important points. <clears throat> but practice, find out what works. <clears throat> and then in the uh, section for this week's course resources, find some more resources. Again, connect that back to Navy and Bagley as well about the transferable skills and carry out these this little exercise here. I suggest you to basically on this one think about the top three that are relevant to you. Because there's about <coughs> 10 to 15 uh, different transferable skills. These are skills which you can use in any situation. They aren't just for computer science or for computer networks and security or IT or literature, history, sports science. But these are things which are part of being human and being useful at work, being useful and effective as students. That's what we are mostly wanting to concentrate on. Yes, we'll teach you a lot of technical skills as well. But if you only have the technical skills, you're not going to be terribly effective as employees. You won't be terribly effective even running your own business. You need to pick up many of the transferable skills that you can read about in that Navy, uh, Navy and Bagley uh, article. I keep mentioning your working bibliography. As you go through this module, on my set, you will find lots and lots of opportunities for collecting sources which will help you to learn to be more effective as a learner, as a student, as an employee, and perhaps even as an employer, a manager or a team leader or whatever. I really strongly encourage you to build this working bibliography because it will be something you can keep referring back to to find those sources time and time again. As you think about what you're doing, how can I do things better? This is being a reflective student. Go back to those notes. Think about the notes that you have made about making notes, studying in each of the sessions that I've given you so far and the next three or four to the end of term. The, the next two or three are going to be really quite interesting, I think, in terms of how they will help you understand yourself better. One of the things I missed, I missed out as I look back to when I was an undergraduate at a quite a large university where the teaching was in groups three times the size here, we didn't have anything about how to study, about how to write, how to structure ideas. It was kind of just assumed that if you got to that university, well, you knew how to be, be able to do the work. And actually, most of us didn't. It changed. I would have loved to have had this set of um, lectures back in 1970 in uh, 71 when I was an undergraduate um, student. It would have changed the way that I looked at what I was doing. It would have changed the way I approached most of my studying. It took until I was, well, I don't know, 30 or 40 before I really understood myself properly. <coughs> I want you to understand yourselves this semester so that you know how to study, so you can make sensible choices over the next six months 
as to whether you're going to stay with a program that you're currently registered with, or whether you want to change from, I don't know, computer science to a different program. But to know why you want to make that change. And that will be because you understand yourself very well. And that comes out of these le uh, lectures that I'm giving you over this semester. As you will discover in a fortnight time when we do something on, per on differences, people differences. And there's an interesting little questionnaire to fill out which will help you to understand yourself in ways you probably never thought of before. Have a look at the, those articles that I've given you. Add to your notes. Keep making notes. But don't just make the notes and then leave them. You need to go back to your notes. Reread them. Add to the notes about your, your thoughts as you reread them, as you keep going along your journey as a student. Because there will be new things you will learn week by week about what works well, what didn't work well, why they worked well, why they didn't work well. This kind of reflection is really valuable. What is most important to you out of all of this, these lists of, our, of skills? Where can you learn about them? Go research. Make, there are quite a lot of uh, material in the university website and the skills website. There are also other sorts of um, sources, other universities, about these various skills. See what they tell you about how to learn them, how to practice them. You need to ask questions all the time as you're making these notes, you're reviewing the notes, you're adding to your notes. Which skill is going to be most important? Which ones are you learning on this module? Which ones are you learning on other modules? What are you learning in programming one? What are you learning on your other modules? What sort of skills? Yes, you're learning lots of technical stuff. How important are those? Again, you need to be reflecting on your skills, both technical and transferable or soft skills. Are the skills that I haven't mentioned to you that you think you need to learn based on, the, on those sources about transferable <coughs> skills? Think about them deeply and carefully because they may tell you other areas that you should, you individually need to think about and go and find um, materials to help you learn. These are the areas that you need to research more about. And only you will be able to decide which bits you need to research more. Of all of those sources that you've picked up and put into your working <coughs> bibliography, you need to make some judgments as to which ones are most important for you. Some of them you already know because of your sixth form and college activity. One of the interesting things about questions is they help you to go find the answers. So, what que based on the, those notes you've already made, that reflection you have carried out, that is, how does it apply to me? What can I do about it? These are the questions. Which particular ones apply to you specifically that you need to 
go and develop a bit further. Add that onto your mind map or your set of notes. So, a whole set of ideas there, that hopefully will help you to think a little bit more about making notes. I want to also pick up a different set uh, that I think it was probably Clive Rosen um, created. Just think a little bit about the question or the answer to why. But I don't want you to use this as your source in your bibliography. I want you to think about this as a way of helping you to direct your research towards finding good sources about the question, why do we need to make notes? Although these are given as answers here, Process information. What is the purpose of the note actually doing? And how does it help us to remember? Why does it put it into long term memory? Why is long term memory important? Is a very important, interesting question. How does it help us to outline the most important points? What does it really mean? To me, to identify, or how do I identify the critical and most important points that I need to make notes about? And how does using your own words show that you actually understand what you're reading? In what way? Does it help me to organize my thoughts? What does organizing or organizing my thoughts actually mean to me? What's the purpose of organizing my thoughts? And that last one, it says written, written record to review the data. So again, Back to the question, why is it important to have a look at my notes at a later date? Why is it important to look at notes again <coughs> and again? So although this is the answer in one sense, it actually is only the starting point to a whole series of new questions. This kind of comes back to what I said, I, the question I asked in the very first week, or the statement I made that I only teach questions, I do not teach answers. So here's a set of answers which many people would say is, this is the answer to why you write notes. To me, yeah, they're kind of vaguely interesting, but unless I ask questions about each one of those answers, I don't actually really understand what's going on. I don't know how to connect it to me. So a set of answers only opens up another set of questions. And if you learn to do this correctly, you will keep going. Answers, questions, answers, questions. And that is how we really learn in the long term. Another aspect of using note making when you're researching and using your own words, <coughs> it helps to avoid that problem of plagiarism. So now the next question is, okay, so how does it help me to avoid plagiarism? Answer on a postcard, each of you, or a postage stamp perhaps better. note making and note structuring and article uh, assignment planning, you know, from that red wavy line, the butterfly dance, how does 
note-making helped me to plan that golden arrow, that linear argument from the question to the conclusion and the answer? having a diary of my ideas, of my notes, help me, if I'm a researcher, to demonstrate that I had this idea first. This is my intellectual property. This is a val I have a valid claim for a patent, perhaps. Now, I was looking at someone on LinkedIn yesterday, someone I've never seen before, but I came across via a chain of connections. And this particular guy has whole section on LinkedIn with, I think, around about 20, 25 different patents in the conjunction with other people who've researched with him. And so maybe a diary of notes about interesting, clever ideas, connections of ideas to each other that lead to this new way of doing something. How are you going to use a diary to prove that? How does it help us guarantee better our intellectual property. Oh, that, I know what that was for. That was because when we wrote this, people were a bit like you were coming more and more with your laptops and so on. And four or five years ago, there were hardly any charging points anywhere, hardly any th three, uh, three pin points. And now the whole of here has uh, USB and three-pin sockets, hasn't it? I think. Yep. Everybody having a look? Yep. We decided that we needed to actually reflect what's happening. I mean, what, about a third of you have got your laptops here that need charging. They don't last for a whole day, typically. Writing a little note to ourselves. Again, here are some thoughts which could be read as answers. But turn them around, add how, or why, or what, or when, or where, in front of each of these little answers, and turn them into questions to decide your answers to these questions. Do you need to use titles if you're doing it in text? How do you handle the, ex ex the extra text that you might need in a word map so that you can still see that high level picture? And if you happen to be able to write very fast and clearly, why not write everything down? What's effective for you? Why use different notebooks? Would it be better actually to just go keep your pages separate but have them all there so that you can actually see these connections? Which works for you? <clears throat> Let me just show you the Nagin Bagley um, who died on this again. shows the, the problem of two column formats. What it came out with was 25 different skills or transferable skills that graduates appear to need and appear to have to develop during their time here at the university. And three different categories. Yeah, they just are visible up there. I'm going to make it a little bit higher. Things about you, things about the way that you could communicate, and things about problem identification and solving. 
So then they develop that into a whole set. And you can see the rating, and I think from memory, this one shows you how important things are that these uh, different attributes were judged by the, the graduates in black. And uh, I think it was an assessment of their quality individually in that open white bar. So, independence really quite important. It's one of the most important uh, attributes that they felt was required by their employer. Things like initiative, the ability to self-assess. And that's one of the reasons why I've asked you in the assignment to actually identify or assess how well you have done in each of the three columns of the marking criteria. Because you need to be able to judge your own work. That's a self-assessment. And a 4.2 on a 5-point scale, that's actually quite important. That's 84% requirement. Time management is also very, very important. And then we have stress tolerance. How resilient are you when things get difficult? Do you cave in? And again, we're going to stress you to some extent. Not, out, not to the limits that are going to break you, but you know, you've know you got multiple assignments due pretty close to each other. That requires your ability to manage your time, time sharing between the different topic areas and the different assignments, and also to cope with the pressure of work. Because you know, suddenly you've got lots happening. You've got to build that resilience. You've got to learn how to be resilient when you end up in those stressful situations. Explaining, telling the story, you need to be able to develop that. You've got to become really good at explaining why and how you're coming to your various conclusions. So I want you to go through this article, which you will find in week eight, Note making and employability. Use the materials on note making and practice those skills by using the article by Navy Bagley <coughs> to come up with an understanding of what you need to develop. Because that lit, that section here is kind of the things you need to be able to develop, and you can do a skills audit as well to identify which of these you are good at and which you need to develop. Okay, folks. Thank you very much. See you next week. Oh, by the way, um, there are two drop-in sessions with Amanda tomorrow, according to your, sh uh, your schedule, and she will be able to help you with questions you have about her half of the module. There will not be a full session tomorrow with the workshops that I run or ran on your article. That finished last week, you're now into the two sessions on a Tuesday with Amanda for your drop-in session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <coughs>